Hi, this is Keely Fish for dpreview.com. For the last five years, I've traveled the world documenting wild things, wild people, and wild places. I'm fascinated with the way that humans connect to the natural world, and I think there's no better way to see this than looking through the eyes of indigenous cultures. Photography is exploration. It's about opening the ordinary and seeing behind walls. Today, I've come to the Arctic with Canon's new 24 megapixel entry-level DSLR, the EOS Rebel T6i. I'll be using the T6i to look beneath the surface at the life and culture of this remote village here in the Arctic land of Barrow, Alaska. Along the way, I'll put the camera to the test to see how it handles the extreme conditions of the Arctic in winter. Before arriving, I made contact with Jana Harchik, a cultural ambassador for the Inupiat who works as a language teacher. I dropped by her office to get an introduction to Barrow and the local culture, and to make a portrait of her. Well, we're as far north as you can possibly get, and Barrow is home. The original name for Barrow actually is Upperwik, which means place to hunt snowy owls. After the portrait, I spent some time walking around to get the lay of the land and a feel for the camera. It's a really beautiful uh, home front here. We've got a bucket of baleen, whale baleen, and a bunch of caribou antlers. Bits of the Arctic strewn about with rusty metal things. <laughs> the Canon EOS Rebel T6i is an entry-level DSLR which uses a newly developed 24.2 megapixel APS-C sensor. It offers improved AF performance compared to its predecessor, the T5i, with the same 19-point, all-cross type, phase detection AF system used in higher-end Canon models. The T6i also autofocuses in live view and video, and features face detection. It is capable of 1080 30p video capture with the built-in stereo microphone. A large, fully articulating rear LCD screen and well-placed manual controls make it easy to use, even with gloves on. Built-in Wi-Fi allows the camera to be controlled from a smart device and for images to be transferred quickly from the camera to a phone or tablet. After exploring town, I head to the shoreline. The Arctic Ocean and the ice that forms over it is the lifeblood of the North. For this setup, I'll be using a wide-angle lens, the new Canon EF 11-24. With the APS-C crop of the T6i, this becomes a 17mm on the wide end. It's a cold day. <laughs> oh. Oh, jellyfish! Jellyfish, once less common, are now exploding in population in the last 10 years. They are another reminder of how warming waters are changing the makeup of the ocean. I want to try some variations, and I think one of the variations I'd love to see is to kind of smooth out that water and give it, even add more to that mysterious kind of otherworldly feeling. So I'd need to throw the camera on a tripod to do that, stabilize it, and then get some long exposures. Adjacent to the shore is a camp called Shooting Station. It serves as the summer hub for fishing and whaling. But today it's a ghost town with mounting snowdrifts and even a set of palm trees made from whale baleen. To tell the story of the Inupiat without understanding whaling would be incomplete. Whaling is a part of our life that really defines who we are as a coastal people. We've been whaling for hundreds and hundreds of years. Our ancestors were whalers. Our children's 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 children will hopefully be whalers. For nearly everything we do is in preparation for the next whale hunt. Today, the Inupiat still hunt bowhead whales, which have recovered from the dark days of commercial whaling. They are one of the few peoples in the world who are permitted to whale within a tight quota for subsistence. As fate would have it, I lucked out and ran into an Inupiat whaling captain, Robert, and his wife, JJ, on the flight up from Anchorage. This is called Unalik. It's from the bowhead whale, and this is the, the blubber and the outer skin part of the whale that we eat. Mmm, it's really good. <laughs> so how do you eat this stuff? You grab a bite and put it in your mouth. All right, yeah. I can do that. I wanted to take a portrait of Robert that provided some context. He suggested his ice cellar where the season's whale catch is stored in insulated permafrost. So it looks pretty tight in there, but 
the nice thing about it is that when you get down in there, the, the natural light from above through the hole is really beautiful. And I think what we're gonna do is just accentuate that a little bit when bringing in the strobes from above and shooting down. This was all dug by hand, no, no electric tools, no, no jackhammers. Wow. It was with ice picks, the whole thing. But we have filled this up to the rim. One time with a one well, about a 70 foot well. I've been all over this land with my uncle. He taught me everything there is to know. He taught me how to set a gill net under the ice, taught me how to butcher caribou, taught me how to cut fish. A well don't like dirty cellars. So if it's clean, we might get lucky and bring home a well. Hmm, it looks a little slippery, huh? The next morning, I met up with Sheldon Adams and his wife, Nora, to get a few more portraits. Like Robert, Sheldon is a whaling captain and in charge of a crew of a dozen. I started when I was like about 10, 12 years old. That's when we can learn how to oar in the ocean, how to uh -huh. do it right without making noise with skin boats. As it happened, this morning was my first glimpse of the sun. It provided a beautiful diffuse light from directly over the horizon. Do you do any of the traditional dances? <laughs> I need a drummer. In just another week, the sun will leave the land in an unyielding polar night and not return for two months. After getting some portraits, I headed over to the Inupiat Heritage Center where I met James, a retired teamster turned bone and ivory carver who was born and raised in Barrow. Although it might be a little cold, but we were born here, you know, you have to understand. This is home. Well, I'm setting up this portrait here with James out here on the tundra. We're kind of setting it up on a tripod and looking at it through live view so that I can get a little bit more um, control over the tones of the white exposure. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fire off a couple tests. It's a lot of work to try and keep our culture alive because it's so important. You don't want to forget who you are too, right, Killy? That's right, absolutely. Okay, it's exactly the same way up here. We're rolling on out to uh, look for wildlife and we got our Ford Escape stuck in the snow here. So it looks like we're gonna get a little toe and a push out, but uh, that can't stop us. <laughs> After getting pulled out of the drift, I headed out on foot in search of snowy owls with a Canon EF 600 millimeter. I'm pretty surprised by how the uh, T6i is performing out here. It's doing an admirable job. It's doing an amazing job actually. I don't see anything yet. Just keep looking. As is often the case, I spent the better part of a day searching, coming up empty-handed. Enter John Tidwell, a local guide who specializes in polar bears and gives photography tours in his vehicle. With time running out on our trip, I called him up hoping for opportunities to photograph winter wildlife. There's only two things that are gonna be moving that are big out there. Man on a snow machine, or uh, a bear. Okay. After a morning spent with no bears in sight, I take a moment to get a portrait of John, a quintessential North Slope resident. Hang in there, man. We're almost there. Then we're headed back south, where we happen upon fresh polar bear tracks in the snow. Looks like a mother and a cub just walked by through here, and they're really fresh. There's just no snow that's been blown into them, so they were here today. It's a mother and cub making a direct line towards the sea. I follow their path along the beach. But the truth is, they are probably swimming to the sea ice on the horizon. There, they stand a chance of hunting seals. But as the sea ice forms later each year, this once short period of famine grows longer. As the daylight wanes, I'm starting to think I might leave this land without spotting any wildlife. But while headed back, I spot a loose form that looks out of place on the tundra. When I bring my lens up to check it out, I can clearly see the black bars and the intense yellow eyes of a juvenile snowy owl. It's a beautiful and fitting end to spend time with this watchful Arctic guardian. Photojournalism is about painting a complete story. Here in only five short days, I've been able to capture portraits, landscapes, and wildlife of this stark land. Everywhere, the Inupiat pragmatism speaks of resilience. 
Sled dogs have given way to snow machines. A giant breakwater blocks the incoming tide of a rising sea. The concept of silla. Silla is the air we breathe. It's our weather. It's the tundra we walk on, the ocean we hunt from. When you get in touch with silla, it makes you feel whole again. Without that essence, what meaning is there in life? Through what kind of lens do you view the world? Because we are all connected. I wouldn't normally bring a camera like the T6i into an environment like this, but I have to say it's impressed me. The easy to use body holds up extremely well in the sub-freezing temperatures. The battery lasted far longer than I had anticipated. It's not perfect though, I'm used to a better hit rate from the AF systems of the pro-level DSLRs that I normally use. But for an entry-level camera, I was very impressed and left Barrow with plenty of sharp shots. I'm headed back to Seattle with a couple of hard drives full of beautiful images. Captain Robert told me that if the whaling captains keep their ice cellars clean, the bowhead whales will return. As I fly back over this frozen land burning jet fuel, I think about the Inupiat respect for the land. And I think about cleaning up my ice cellar. For DP Review, I'm Keely Fish. The Canon EOS Rebel T7i sits at the top end of the company's entry-level DSLR lineup. The T7i is targeted toward users who want an easy-to-use camera that offers advanced features that they can grow into. It features a 24-megapixel APS-C sensor and for the first time on a Rebel, dual-pixel autofocus. Dual-pixel AF allows for quick focusing and reliable subject tracking in live view and movie mode, and the camera's fully articulating touchscreen lets you tap to focus. On the video side, the T7i can capture full HD video at 60p, and it has a jack for adding an external microphone. The Rebel T7i comes with Wi-Fi with NFC and Bluetooth. NFC allows for quick pairing with Android devices, while Bluetooth can send images to your smartphone as they're taken. The Canon EOS Rebel T7i offers a proven sensor and autofocus system and a broad feature set, making it a compelling choice for photographers seeking a compact yet powerful camera. For more information on the Canon EOS Rebel T7i, visit dpreview.com. Here's what you need to know to get started with the Nikon D5600. The D5600 is usually packaged with an 18-55mm f3.5-5.6 to kit lens. For greater versatility, the 18-140mm f3.5-5.6 to offers a wider zoom range. If you're just going to buy one additional lens for your D5600, we'd recommend the 35mm f1.8. It's small, sharp, 
and great for shooting in low light. To get started, we recommend a UHS-1 Type Class 3 memory card with at least 64GB of storage. We also recommend adding an extra battery to your kit. If you're a beginner, the green auto mode will take care of the shooting settings, letting you focus on composition. But to get the most out of the D5600's 24 megapixel sensor, we recommend shooting in RAW mode and adjusting the images using Nikon's bundled Capture NXD software. For more advanced photographers, the PASM exposure modes will let you take full control over the D5600, including its versatile 39-point autofocus system. Switch to Autofocus C if you want to shoot moving subjects. If you'd rather position your focus point manually, you can do this by moving your finger around the touchscreen, either in live view or with your eye to the viewfinder. The effects mode allows you to apply 10 different filters to stills and video. The D5600 shoots HD video at up to 60p. Use the flip out screen to compose video footage and set the focus. Use SnapBridge to wirelessly connect the camera to your mobile device for photo sharing. For more in-depth information about the Nikon D5600, including a deep dive into all of its key features, head to dpreview.com.